So I just recently made a short about this particular video right here, making a lighter in prison. And though this is not the way that I used to do it when I was serving time, it's certainly a more ingenious way to do so, and it brings me back for certain. You know, I've never seen white outlet plate covers in jail or prison. We didn't have that luxury. But it's clear to me why they're doing this the way that they are with the prong at the end of the pencil with the saran wrap holding it there and then the piece of wire put into the other part of the outlet and they're going to touch that to the top of the pencil so that that sparks on that graphite and then ignite that tissue. Making fire in prison. It's something that you don't really think that you need, but you you, you kind of do for a lot of different reasons. It's a survival thing for certain. When it comes to tattooing, it's an absolute necessity. If you're smoking in prison, it's an absolute necessity. If you're cooking in prison, a lot of guys are firebombing stairwells at this point. Fire plays a big role in serving time. It's the craziest thing to think about, and it's one thing that is absolutely going to get you in a shitload of trouble if you get caught doing so. I don't know what the charge is. It's been so long. I'm so far out of the loop. I couldn't even tell you. Is it destruction of state property? Is it a security threat type of a charge? I mean, fire, it's dangerous. You could burn down the prison. Though I'm not really sure how you would do that considering it's all steel and concrete. Uh, but you could certainly have a fire that breaks out and the smoke could it could really be more damaging and dangerous than the actual fire. Why these guys are doing this this way is so they don't leave black marks and burn marks all over that outlet. That could be a dead giveaway that guys are making fire while serving time. And again, that's a big no-no. When I was serving time, we had surge protectors, our own personal surge protectors, so that we could plug in all of our electronic devices, our TV, our... Shit, what the hell else did we have that we needed a damn surge protector for? We had all sorts of electronic items, CD player, power supply for that, power supply for your beard trimmers, things like that. Surge protectors were something we could purchase off of commissary, and it would be in the surge protectors is where we were actually popping a socket is what we called it. And that's what this is right here. Hey, who gonna make the fire? Who gonna pop the socket? Uh, that's exactly what that is. And that is such a dual meaning prison term right there, isn't it? I mean, because not only do you pop the socket in an effort to cause a spark and make fire, but you could also pop a socket, trip a breaker, explode the outlet, go ahead and pop that socket, make that fire so we can burn this soot and make this ink so we can make this fire and sterilize this needle so that we can burn these, these toilet paper rings underneath of the steel bunk so that we can cook on our bunk. I've seen those videos of guys cooking on their bunks, which are made of metal and they're also painted over. You know, one thing that I think to myself is I surely hope that they heated that up to get that paint off of there first before just heating that shit up and cooking right over top of that paint. They did that, right? I mean, they got the paint out of the way before they cooked on it. Maybe some guys didn't. That's got to be a real crazy lesson to learn. Oh man, we making burgers up in prison? Why does joint taste like lead paint? I wanted to do this video and share a prison story with you guys about my experiences making fire in prison. And not only how dangerous that is, but more, more importantly, how scary it is. It certainly cause for your little Junes to be puckering up, up inside of the cell block, especially when you've got a fire burning and guards making their rounds. Have you ever had a fire going in your locker or behind your locker or up underneath of your bunk and you're trying to make sure the guard don't get wind of that? Uh, wind especially, meaning like smelling that while they're making their round. Because surely you're going to learn right there in that moment if they do find you with that fire burning what kind of a charge that's going to carry for you. And again, that's why I don't really know because I never personally got caught with any sort of a campfire while I was serving time, but I most certainly had a plenty of them burning. 
not only with guards making their rounds, taking your little spray bottle that you've commandeered from the cleaning supplies and got your little fabric softener and shampoo concoction mixed up for some air freshener, spraying that money all around while the guards are making their rounds, trying to make sure they can't smell the smell of smoke. Smoke is a pretty distinguishable smell. And you gotta be somewhat of a dummy to be able to walk by and not notice the smell of smoke. But then again, we are talking about some prison guards after all. And maybe I just had a lucky rabbit's foot up my ass. I don't know. But for whatever the case, like I said, I never got caught making fire in prison. But I certainly came close. I will never forget this one particular time at band camp. I mean, this one particular time while I was in prison, I was burning soot to make tattoo ink. Soot is such a pain in the ass thing to burn, especially when you're, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in a cell or you're in an open dormitory setting. An open dormitory setting makes it a hell of a lot more dangerous, not only with the fact that the guards could smell it, see it, but you've also got all the prying eyes of the other prisoners who are in there with you. Burning soot you, you have to have something that you're using as a candle. What we would do was we would normally take a soda can, cut that thing in half. You've got the bottom half of the can that you would fill with hair grease or in Diddy's case, baby oil. Let that marinate for a moment. Yeah, they actually do sell baby oil in prison. How wild is that? I wonder if Diddy's got his commissary sheet filled out already. Crazy to think. But you would fill the bottom of that soda can with your baby oil or your hair grease and then you would twist up your toilet paper and you would put the wick in there. So now you've got your candle. Then you would take the other part of the soda can or another bottom of a soda can actually and you would fashion that money on top with some holes poked in the side of it so that when your candle is burning and you've got to burn your candle correctly, okay, because you can't just burn the candle. I can't remember. For any prison tattoo artists who see this video, you you'll, you may know what I'm talking about. But have you ever burned a candle in prison that does not produce soot? You've got to have that fire just right burning in that candle so that it's catching enough of that grease or baby oil so that it's really causing that soot to build up. Because if it burns just like a regular candle when the fire's not that, you know, you just got this little flickering flame, you're not going to be producing soot or enough of it. You know, not only do you need to burn this candle, but you need to burn this candle fast and hard. No ditty. Because look, we're in prison. We don't have a lot of time. We've got 30 minutes between rounds. So as soon as they get done making those rounds, it's on. Pop that socket, make that fire. Let's get this candle burning and let's make this soot so we can make this tattoo ink. You've got your other half of the can, another bottom that you fashion over top of the first bottom with the holes poked in the side of it. Now you're burning soot. Okay, now you're burning your candle, you're producing soot, your fire is just right. But again, you're burning fast and hard. So now you probably got like little freaking soot trails flying out the side of your can. That's when you know you're doing too much. But again, we ain't got 30 minutes. We got to hurry up and make this soot. So now you need a cracker box. You put the cracker box on top of the can situation with some holes poked in the side of that. So now you can catch the residual soot that's coming out the sides of the can. So you've got collection on the inside of the can and you've got collection on, on the inside of the cracker box. You've got a double catcher. No ditty party pun there. When you're burning fast and hard, no matter how many catchers you have, you're going to have smoke. And where there's smoke, there's fire. But there's also the smell of fire. So you need to try to combat against that because you've got these guards that are making rounds every 30 minutes or maybe they're only every hour. If you've got RoboCop on who's making rounds every 10 or 15 minutes, it's a no-burn zone, okay? We're not burning today. We're not popping the sockets. Leave the outlets alone. No fire today. You need to light a cigarette somewhere? You, you, you're nicking that bad? You better take your two batteries and some paper clips. But that brings me back to the spray bottle smell good. You know, you want to try to combat against the smell of the smoke with some kind of an air freshener because, again, not only do you have these guards who are making rounds, but you also have these freaking 
prisoners. And in a lot of cases, man, the prisoners are worse than the freaking guards. Guard, guard, look, guard, I've got some pertinent information for you. They're making fire in that back cut over there. Go run down on them and don't forget to bring that extra hot dog tray at lunchtime. Man, this shit's crazy, man. I can't emphasize it enough that in so many cases while serving time in prison, you got to watch out for the freaking prisoners who are going to tell on you more than the damn guards. I've had guards come to me. And this is how you know it's a screwed up situation. I've had guards come to me and say, Joe, dude, listen, this dude is telling on you. Had that happen to me in the jail one time. Guard didn't give a damn. Guard was cool with me. Recognized me as one prisoner who was not snitching amongst an entire snitch factory. But here's the crazy thing. He told me that this other little YN was telling on me. Yeah, man, that's why we're in here. I don't give a damn what you're doing here. I don't care about no damn tattoos. Give me a tat, Joe. You know, they locked me down and moved me because they were worried that I was going to go beat that dude's ass. And I was. Especially when I found out they were locking me down. I was certainly at the ball. Yo, you lucky. You lucky I'm locked down. Yo, that dude telling right there. Get him. They weren't going to get him. He was one of them. One of them little young ass snitching prisoners is what he was. They ended up moving me. I had a beautiful situation in that cell block. I didn't want to be moved. I had a top tier corner cell, man. Joe was in the penthouse. But they got me up out of there. And uh, I can't remember where I went after that. I'm pretty sure wherever I did go. Delicious ended up being my cellmate. That was a crazy time. Maybe a story to definitely relive here in this 2024 rendition of Joe's Best Ever Prison Stories Remastered. Leave a like and a comment if you want that one. But yeah, man, making fire in prison, absolute necessity, especially when it comes to tattooing and so many other things as well. You could also burn inside of the stainless steel Harley Davidson commode, the five in one, and I'm not talking about a, a paint tool your toilet sink combo. They've got the little toilet paper punch out right there made of steel, perfect place to burn a chest piece. Just put your little flapper over the end of it. You can catch plenty of soot right there. But I wanna share with you one particular story that comes to, oh, and real quick before I do that, you're probably thinking, Joe, five in one combo? What are you talking about in relation to the sink toilet conglomeration up inside of the cell block? The stainless steel commode oftentimes referred to as your Harley Davidson in the cell. Dudes will spit shine that money and buff and wax their cell floor. They will tell you you can't even come in the cell wearing your shoes. That brings up a crazy reminder of a prison story right there. I'm reminded of the time we were locked up with the Somalian pirate and them little young pieces of shit up in the cell block were trying to snitch on them trying to break bad on some sure enough Africans. Went up into the cell wearing their shoes, even spit in their cell. You know, these dudes are from third world countries. They take things a hell of a lot serious than we did. Man, they were ready to cut that little young dude's head off for walking in his cell with some shoes on and spitting on his floor at that. They never did, so that calls to question whether or not they were really about that life. They were facing piracy charges, and that carries life. So I'm not really sure why they let that slide, but they did. But getting back, because I get so off track, to that five-in-one combination, the, the toilet and sink, you know, that thing serves a lot of purposes. Sure, that's where your dookie goes. But it's also how you communicate with other prisoners when you drain all of the water out of the toilet. It's also where you wash your clothes in the same place that you doo-doo. And if you think that that's bad, it's also where you keep your milk cartons cold at. You know, on a hot summer day when the walls are sweating up in the cell block, the coolest place you've got is inside that toilet bowl. Can you imagine taking a shit and then flushing and right after that dropping a milk carton in there for a little late night snack? But yeah, the toilet is a is certainly a five-in-one combo up in the jail or prison. But again, Joe with the ADD, forgive me, y'all, I'm all over the place, but as I get back to telling these prison stories, my mind is just open. One of the craziest things that ever happened to me in relation to having fire in prison was no bullshit. I had that whole concoction set up, soda can bottom, soda can top, cracker box over top, Fire blazing. Five alarm fire going on in that soda can underneath that saltine cracker box. And I had this 
behind the locker, I believe. Now, if it wasn't behind our tall stand-up lockers, it was inside of one of those lockers. And you know what? It probably was inside. Now that I think about it, there, I don't remember there being enough space behind the lockers to have this. So it probably was inside the locker. And I will never forget fire blaze and five alarm fire and the guards come running down on us. And I'm like, oh shit, somebody told I'm getting shook down. That's it. I'm going to the hole. I'm already ready to start packing my shit up. No need to open the locker and try to put the fire out. Let these guards play fire department. I watched these guards run up into the housing unit and come right into my cut. The area that I share between me and the prisoner in the bunk right beside me. And they start shaking him down. You want to talk about a crazy situation. Not only do we have the slightest little smoke puffing outside of this damn locker, but the heat that was emanating from this locker door had to be hot. And you've got a guard who was sitting in a plastic chair with his back to my locker door with the fire blazing inside of this joint. Searching the locker right across from that. He must have sat there for a good 15, 20 minutes. And do you know, that fire was burning the entire time. I know his neck had to be sweating. Me sitting there, my man, my Junes were tucked up to my lower back. I was scared, man. And you know, you're in prison. What what are they going to do to you? They're going to put you in isolation. And these are the problems that you don't want. But you weren't thinking about that when you were out there committing crime. Now, were you, Joe? Everybody's sorry when they get caught. And that's all I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about my sorry ass. I'm about to get hemmed up. And I didn't even do nothing. And this is the crazy thing. I'm about to get hemmed up because somebody told. And they didn't even tell on me. They told on somebody else. And I'm about to catch a ricochet. Joe about to catch some friendly fire. No pun intended right there. And uh, I'm going down for something that they didn't even catch me for. They just got lucky. But do you know? They carried out that search. I don't know if they found what they were looking for. I don't even remember. My mind wasn't even focused on what what they were doing over there. They carried out that search and then they left. I opened up that locker door and it was just like, oh my God, man. How they didn't catch that shit, man. I'll never understand for as long as I live. You would have imagined that it would have been a close call like that that would have had me thinking, we need to really... uh, reevaluate how we're passing our time in here, probably do things differently, but not Joe. (laughs) Hell no, I was like, yo, we could have two fires going at the same time. One over here and one over there. Yeah, man, fire in prison. Oftentimes you need it for a lot of different things. Hey, look, that's it. I just wanted to share this story with you guys. I hope this was something y'all enjoyed. If it was, please leave a like and a comment on this if you're enjoying old Joe getting back to some show enough prison content. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!